session i'll be talking about uh, how to model the volatility and uh, for this purpose i would be using the garsh model as a expansion we know it is generalized auto regressive and conditionally heteroscedastic model right i'll explain each and every aspect of this as we move forward so we'll be uh, taking an example and then uh, try to create a garsh model and try to use that model to predict the volatility of that particular data set now before we get into it uh i hope you are quite comfortable with the usage of the arima group of models auto regressive integrated moving average model where our objective was to typically arrive at expected value so we were projecting the price expected price so expected price or expected value conditionally given the past based on the past we were trying to predict a value which is an expected value and we also will we also uh, would be building a 95% or some kind of a confidence interval around that expected value now why i am talking about arima here is in that kind of a process where we were doing the expected value finding in that case we were taking the conditional variance right the volatility at different points in time we assumed it as constant so the arima group of models they assume that the conditional variance is constant but when it comes to the real world financial data right any time series data it could be stock prices commodity prices interest rates whatever it is most of the real world financial data generally the variance is not constant probably there could be periods where volatility is very high right so the fluctuations in the prices could be very high and there could be periods where the stability could be there again followed by periods of intermediate volatility so which means variance is not constant across there is a possibility of clustering clustering of the variance so there could be a few calm periods and there could be a periods where the prices are fluctuating drastically so this gives us the need that we need to really understand and model the volatility and this is where garsh is one of those various models that are available to model this volatility and one of the major applications of this volatility is in the risk management aspect obviously risk management is heavily dependent on standard deviation or volatility so the moment i am able to evaluate and predict the volatility i can take this input into the building of value at risk models so value at risk in the financial parlance typically uh, takes the volatility as the input so this is where the computation of dynamic volatility will help us in doing a better prediction of the volatility now because of that reason in this session i would be more interested in coming out with a garsh model how to predict the volatility right and just to give you a brief input about the value at risk generally though there are different kinds of measures and mechanisms 
major financial institutions, especially for measuring their market risk, what they typically uh, do is they calculate the value at risk at 99% confidence interval and over a 10 day period. So what it means, this whatever is this number that comes out, whatever is the value at risk that comes out, it is the kind of a loss that can come up with a probability of 1%. So the loss that this particular process or this particular uh, trade can give more than the VAR number is around 1%. So that is what is typically measured by the financial institution. Now that is what we will try to find out for the data. So what I have taken is, I will take one data set. Here I have uh, taken the data set relating to the Sensex return. Sensex return, Sensex is a market index. <coughs> Just like FTSC. Uh, uh, so we have a Sensex return over the past 15 years. I have taken the data right from February 2001 till May 2016. So this is the kind of data that I have taken and we will try to model the GARSH on this particular data. So this data is there in my Excel sheet. Let me just uh, showcase that. Right, uh, I have a CSV file, volatility modeling using GASH model. So here you have right from February 2001 till May 2016, we have the Sensex returns data. Now let's bring that data into R. Right, I have the, just opened R. Now the first point is, because this is entirely a time series related data, I will try to handle it using the zoo package. Zoo package typically has a good number of functions which can handle time series related data. So if you don't have it on your system, you better the install the package from install packages. Right, I hope you know this method. Then you go to uh, uh, any of the servers, either you can directly download it from Austria, which is the headquarters of R, or you can uh, choose the server which is near to you. As I am from India, I am choosing this India server. And here you can browse through the stuff and probably uh, you can install this package called Zoo. Probably it's already there on my system, so I don't want to install it again. So that's the process. Now I am loading. The first thing is once it is installed, I have to load this package. <coughs> and so I am using library to load this package. Okay. Now I have to read the CSV file into my into my data set, into my R. So for that I am defining uh, some value. Probably I'll call it as Sensex. That is the name of the variable I'm giving. So I'll try to read my zoo packet. I mean, I'll try to read that CSV file into the zoo format. So what is the path of that file? So let me uh, get the path of that file. So it is uh, present as a part of this particular folder, right? So I'll take the path of this. So I'll put it in uh, double quotes. And because I'm using Windows, this is the format I need to have for my folders. 
and the name of the file is this one dot csv so this is the file okay uh, i am i meant to uh, add a few more variables okay so the file name is this now it has a header so i have to set 